What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, this is TWA Motorsports, and today, I don't even know if you guys remember what this thing is. I actually have a Trans Am back here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, today we're gonna try to get a few things accomplished on this thing, and so when I say that, obviously guys, I'm still waiting on, really right now I'm waiting on odds and ends pieces, so I'm gonna buy them as I go. Um, and when I say odds and ends, like I need a new AC compressor, uh, I need to clean up some brackets, stuff like that. But ultimately the engine, I'm still waiting on the heads to come back from Texas Speed. I sent off the six, or the six, the 317 heads that came off of my son's, actually came off the six liter over here behind me. And um, I'm having them ported, polished, um, ground down a little bit so our compression isn't crazy. I don't wanna run E85 necessarily all the time. And so that's why I'm using the 317 heads cleaned up. So. That's what's going on there. So you're gonna see an engine video in the future here, hopefully soon. I, I, they called me the other day and said they, were, they had pulled them apart. So I'm hoping maybe in a couple weeks I'll have them. But today we're gonna to focus on the transmission. So ultimately guys, here's what we've got. Um, that, I sold the transmission that came out of this car as a 4L60, but that is what that guy is back there under the table. This is a 4L80, which I'm planning on putting in it. now. Uh, originally, I started making videos of this quite a while back where I cleaned this thing up. It came out of a uh, the truck that I parted out. So I got a six liter and a two wheel drive 4L80 out of like a 2001 um, one ton. So if you guys go way back in videos, you could see where I yanked this out. It was disgusting. I did take the time to clean it up. That's why it's got the tape and stuff on it, but that has been quite a while back. And so I, you know, this project is kind of set but today I wanna to talk about some of the stuff that's required in order to put a 4L80 into an F body because it's not just put it up in there. Um, we do have some stuff we have to do. So one of the things that I want to do today is I wanna get under the car and I wanna show you guys what has to be as far as clearance wise in order to make this thing fit because it's, it's quite a bit more robust in the middle and the bell housing's a little bigger. So I don't know if you guys can tell that because that's kind of in the dark back there, but um, this the belly of this thing is quite a bit bigger. Now, one of the main things that you have to do, and uh, I've never seen it, you probably could fit it in there without doing this, but the very first thing I did is I chopped the corners off of this. So normally guys, they, ha they have these ears that come out like this, and I'll show you on the other transmission here in a minute, because uh, I have a, a core that we're gonna kind of use to, to fit up into place, but um, that's one of the things you have to clearance. The other thing is the 4L60 harness, so the actual electronic harness, plugs in on the passenger side. So it, it comes in straight from the top like this. Obviously on the 4L80, it comes to the other side. So when it comes to the other side, it has to plug in like this, making there be some clearance issues with the body right here. Now, I've, I've combated that a couple different ways. One way, um, the factory 4L60 harness is, is straight, okay? So it comes in like this. They make a 90 degree one. So I got one of those with a segment swap harness. So we're going to be doing a segment swap on this, similar to what we've done in the past. I'm not gonna use one of those aftermarket like plug and play harnesses. I've just never had any luck with them. I'm not saying that you can't use that, but um, let me grab this piece that I just got and I wanna show you guys what I'm talking about. Now this came from uh, BMP or BP Automotive. There's a, there's a lot of these out here guys. Just make sure that you're getting the right one because they make one that looks like it's just this centerpiece. So just this, which will work on like a trailblazer or something, but on an F body, you have to have this piece. So we have to pin these uh, and they give you plenty of lead. And that is for the additional, there's an input and an uh, output speed sensor. Uh, the 4L60 only has an output. You have to add an input. So that is what's going on with that. We have to add that in order to make the segment swap work. So that's what this guy is. But this is what I'm talking about. So what will happen is that the plugs are actually the same from a 4L60 as far as like you can fit it on there. But this is kind of how it comes in from the factory. Um, even though this is the female end, you can see what I'm talking about. So it would come in straight. Well, obviously that would require even more clearance in order to make that work. So when you have the 90 on it like this, see how it's a 90 degree angle? That makes way less clearance when you're doing this. So you see what I'm talking about. 
as far as clearance goes. And there is a up and a down. You can see the arrow right there that tells you which way this thing goes on there. That's the top. So what I want to do is I want to grab my other transmission. Let's just go over there and look at it right now. Because I have a core which is completely hollow that allows us to uh, fit. You guys saw me put it in the um, 55 and test it. But this guy right here is completely hollow. So it makes it really easy to um, lift up, move around and whatnot. But I do need to get a tail shaft on it. This one actually has a broken hole, but we can use a couple others. We just need to put a tail shaft on it because I have a BMR 4L80 mount that we're going to put on it. So let me whip the bolts out of that tail shaft on the one we just looked at and um, move it over to this. But oh, one more thing. You can see the ears that I'm talking about that I trimmed off. So I trimmed that basically from that bolt hole right there straight down is what I did this big ear right here. I, it was really, really close when I did it on my green truck. It fit without trimming it, but that's what I'm talking about. I got the tail shaft off that transmission. Got to push up in there. I will tell you guys, the holes on this other one are jacked. So I had to do some drilling to make the tail shaft or that rear piece fit. But I've got everything out here that I need to like kind of test things. So I've got the BMR mount. Now this is not the one that holds the torque arm because I'm going to be running a torque arm that mounts to the body instead of the transmission or the tail shaft of the transmission. I never have liked that. I've used a conversion mount where they have this little piece that comes up here to mount it. I didn't like that either. It just, it was too close. So I'm going to choose to go with one that mounts a little further back, but I've got, I went through my box of all the stuff I've taken off of this car over the, <laughs> over the years, we'll call it now. And I've got to the transmission mount bolts. So these guys are what's going to go in here. And then this, we need to put on the bottom of that tail shaft. So I'm gonna do that real quick. I will tell you guys the original, um, I think it's an 18 millimeter, does not fit the 4L80. And you are going to be buying a 4L80 two wheel drive um, transmission mount. I am using rubber, I don't want any noise. You can use a polyurethane if you'd like. This is just what I choose. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna see if I can find a nut to fit this because I really need that before we get under the car and kind of look exactly what we need to do as far as placement goes. Got that K member out from under it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab my light. We're gonna go under there first without the transmission or anything, guys. And we're gonna make sure that we've got the mount facing the right way. I'm pretty sure, you well, know, I say that. I just wanna make sure that we've got it in there the right way. I'm gonna to try to grab, like I said, I'm gonna get my light under there and make sure because I wanna put this thing kind of loosely on the transmission as I'm going up in there. So we got an idea where it's gonna set up against the floor. And uh, so that's the plan here is to get under there and try this first. Now, hopefully you can get a sense of how it's gonna be in here. I just got one bolt kind of loosely threaded in on both sides, but this is the way it faces. Um, it can only go in one way, guys, so you can't put it in backwards. So now that we know that, let's go ahead and put this curved side on the transmission. So we're gonna grab, go put the mount on the transmission on the tail shaft and then put this on the end of the mount. And I know it's gonna be loose and kind of moving around, but that's fine, because we just, we're looking for this area right here. So this is generally where the clearance has to be in this area. It is very, very, very close to the, um, tran or the uh, fuel lines, your factory fuel lines. And then obviously this guy won't be here because that's the shifter, but um, I may have to move, kind of renegotiate some things. I wanna get, Get it up in here though and see where we need to mark. Let me tell you, this is way easier to do with an empty transmission. So I've got it sitting on my jack. It's not gonna stay there, but you can see I've got the mount on, the rubber mount that we had earlier. I did find a nut to fit it. So what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to set this thing up on here, kind of like this, if that makes sense, like that. I'm gonna go ahead and put that nut in there and uh, we're gonna slide it underneath and then we'll be able to get our fitment. Um, now, remember the ears aren't trimmed off on this, so maybe you guys will be able to see. My plan is to snug down a couple of these bolts in the back for the trans mount. And then once we do that, we can get an idea where we need to make clearance for the plug, like we originally stated. And then I can maybe show you guys the clearance issues that we're gonna have here. I'm hoping that um, I don't have to trim those off in order to make this work, just because I, I like having those on there for test fit reasons. I don't like, I don't wanna just trim them off on, cause some vehicles it'll fit 
and I wanna know if it'll fit before I trim them off because there is a closeout plate that bolts to this that you, I mean, you could still probably trim it and put it on, but that's one of the bolts for that. Got this thing up in here, got the bolts ran down snug. And so you can kind of see guys what I'm talking about. So it's a tight fit. You could see this guy here. I also cut that off, I forgot to tell you that. Uh, let me see if I can get on the other side. I'm, I'd like to get the light, which I have on the other side here. Uh, I've got the front of it lifted up, obviously with the jack, so it makes it a little bit harder to get underneath. But okay, so you can see what a tight fit it is, especially with like your transmission lines. Those will have to be, you know, you, you're not gonna be able to probably use your factory ones. I'm planning on using an AN fitting and then coming out a different way. So you're, you're definitely gonna have to have a 90 on your fittings as far as the transmission fittings. But then this over here is what we're concerned about because this is where the plug goes. So if you look, um, right there is where the plug should be. And if you notice right here, we're lined up we're gonna have to knock that in. Now I, I should have gotten, I should have gotten my um, shifter out of the way, but hopefully you guys can see what area I'm talking about. This is the area on the floor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a marker and mark directly across from that. But before I do that, I think I'm gonna grab my, um, that plug, even though this transmission doesn't have the ability to plug in, I'm gonna grab the plug and see exactly how much, cause I think we're gonna have to do a lot less just mainly based on the fact that that's a 90 degree plug. Now I can, well, I was gonna say I can move the transmission kind of over a little bit, but let me, let me get this out of the way, the shifter, and then we'll maybe have a better idea what we're looking at. Another thing I did is because my jack's like right in the way, I bungeed this up. Now it did drop a little, but I can kind of push it up and it'll just give me the ability to see uh, now I gotta get down there, like I said, and move that shift linkage out of the way. That way we can get an idea of what we're looking at. Unfortunately, I don't have anything to clip it to, but you get the idea here. Um, I've got that plug up in there and you can see exactly where the clearance needs to be made as far as making that work. Now, with that being said, this is a double wall panel. So behind this outer floor mount that you see, I'm sorry, my light's rolling around down here. Um, but behind this, it's, it's hollow. So you got a couple different options. Some people choose to cut it. Some people just dent it in. So what I'm thinking is I may use my um, air hammer and just hammer this in to get the clearance that I need. But I, this is the area that we need to do that to. So I'm gonna do it probably from the lines. So the, the fuel lines and the brake line, I'm gonna do it all the way from there down to where it starts to flatten out and we'll just see if we can get the clearance that we need. The problem is, is this is kind of a, you know, I guess if you go and far enough, you don't have to take it in and out, but now I'm ready to take this thing out and um, have the clearance to do what I need to do. You can see the area that I have marked. I kind of just drew a box right here. So I've been back and forth. Like I said, I was gonna air hammer it down. The problem is guys, because of this right here, I think it's not gonna wanna bend the way I want it to. So I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna use a Dremel just because I have a little more control with a Dremel and a cutoff wheel. And I'm gonna cut through that, just that one layer because there is two layers. Like I said, if you look up top here, you can see what I'm talking about. There's another layer underneath it. So this brace is, um, it's hollow on the inside. But, so I'm gonna be real careful, not cut real deep. And we're just gonna get this square out of here. And I may go a little further down than I marked uh, I may remark it, I don't know, but I'm gonna go all the way up to my lines. Just be careful not to get into your lines and then be careful not to get into the layer of metal below this. Now, after about 15 Dremel bits, <laughs> we uh, got it cut out and you can see how it's double walled. And uh, what I did guys is I took my file and filed down the edges. I may put like um, some rubber trim around this. I mean, I don't think we're gonna have any issue. We definitely have the clearance we need now. And I kind of took my hammer and kind of rolled the edges in a little bit uh, as much as I could. I could probably put a relief cut in the corners and roll it over more, but uh, this is good. So I'm probably gonna coat this off camera with something. Um, you know, the bottom of the car is not painted, so I, I'm not really worried about making it the same color, 
but I'd like to put something on these fresh edges. So I may just use some touch up paint and uh, get those. I don't know, we'll just have to see. But now our four ladies should fit. At this point, here's where we're at. Um, I scuffed that up, that area where I just cut and I coated it on the inside where there was no paint. So the inside of that hole that I cut down there for the wiring harness, I put a little POR 15 on the inside and then on the lip. So I don't wanna go ahead and put any paint on it right now because I wanna test fit the motor, the transmission all bolted together. So that's where we're at right now. Obviously the engine isn't assembled. Guys, I was really excited because I thought I had all the stuff to assemble it and I'm missing head bolts um, or head studs. The ones that came out of that block, I thought were ARP and they're not. And I just, I refused to use like a cheapy head stud. So I ordered some ARP bolts. So in the next video on this thing, we are going to be assembling the engine. I think I'm gonna have a whole video just on that because uh, there's a lot of stuff to put on it. I don't think we're gonna put the drive accessories on, but we're gonna get the heads on. I've got those back now. Um, we're gonna put obviously head gaskets, the oil pan, the turbos, all that stuff. And I wanna set it on the cradle with the transmission mount and that um, transmission and roll it under there and make sure that everything fits before I go putting, you know, I may have to move some stuff around or, before I paint. And if I have to knock, a, you know, a couple more spots in, I wanna paint it all at once. I don't wanna have it painted, put it up in there. So I know it's like, back and forth it's a lot of work but you know i'm kind of picky i don't want just a bunch of not you know chipped off paint under there the other thing i did if you notice look guys i'm after driving my son's camaro i i just hated the the rod ended stuff that he had as far as suspension goes i want this car to be you know a nice driving car so if you notice i took the spindles off and they're setting right here um i had stock uppers which I'm gonna keep, but I was thinking about replacing those aftermarket lowers with a set of stock lowers. The problem is, is there's like no, nobody sells a reman um, other than, uh, I can't think of the company, but I don't trust their product, so I'm not gonna use it. So at this point, I'm not gonna put that back together. I'm gonna leave it like that until we're like going in as far as assembly, assembly wise. So I'm gonna leave the spindles and stuff off. It also makes it a lot lighter and it's not wearing on the ball joint like leaning over. So that's that's what you see there. That's why it's like that. But like I said, I think we're gonna end the video here. In the next video though, we are gonna get the engine assembled. I don't know if we're gonna to try to test fit anything under the car in the next video on it, but we're definitely gonna get the engine assembled, but we are making some progress. And now we've got clearance for the 480 or at least so we think. Uh, it looked like it when we had it under there, but you know, once you start getting the motor and transmission all lined up, we may have to make some tweaks, but hopefully you guys are enjoying some progress on this thing. You know, it's been sitting here for, it's, it's probably been about three years since this thing actually ran and drove. Perfectly running and driving car when I took it apart. So that's, that's what's sickening that it's been apart this long. But, I, you know, I, I needed motivation, I needed parts. It, it's just, we're getting there. Anyway, if you guys did enjoy this video, please like always smash that thumbs up button. Guys, if you are not subscribed, go down there, hit that subscribe button so you can see all the updates on this. Of course, while you're down there doing all of that, make sure you ring that bell icon that notifies you every single time we drop a new video. And stay tuned to see this thing start to come together.